so much fucked up shit to get into. Welcome back to Little Sneakers, baby. I am Michael fucking Rainey here with my boys, Jacob Furman and Terry. Hey, Jake, hey. I don't usually have you next to me. No, this is weird. This is nice. Can you turn around so I can grab your hips? Because nope. you know I like that. God oh, damn it. Oh, you did it to yourself. <laughs> John oh, Del no. no, what's happening? <laughs> Johnny Delco. Bizarro world. Everything's going wrong already. And our homeboy, Jared Klickstein, hey. author of Crooked Smile, hey, one of the best books that Up I've top. read recently. Thank yeah, you. baby. Thank you for joining us, Jared. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Go round Honored the horn. to be here. There's nothing that we do that isn't awkward. Uh, we were getting smooth for a while there, but we just really all fucking tumbled into a pile where all our penises got tied together like a cartoon. Like a rat did them. <laughs> <laughs> man, uh, we have had a delightful week here in Austin, man. And as wonderful as the city is, there is some fucked up shit. And there are... Uh, there are two, probably two serial killers here right now. And then there was a guy who got arrested, I think last year, this guy, Raul Meza. He killed at least three people, probably upwards of 10. Uh, he actually called 911 on himself. He's like, I think you're looking for me. And police came to his hotel to get him. He's from here, but he was in a hotel? I don't know if he's from here, but uh, he ended up here. You got to be real crazy to be in a hotel in your own hometown. But <laughs> 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 oh, brother, I know it. <laughs> I was not thinking of you, yeah. but perhaps. You. Yes. Yeah, my last bender, I ended up at a, uh, at a motel probably three miles from my house. Actually, no, I ended up at two motels, one within like a mile of my house and one within about three miles of my house. I can't believe you were uh, politely asked to leave the first one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I had a I had a blast though, man. I really had fun by myself. Yeah, the one weekend I had, um, I, I just wanted to party by myself in a motel alone, and I got a bunch of beer. I had Suboxone, <laughs> and after after I initially took the Suboxone, I was like, oh man, I don't want to go down this road again. And I walked to a Royal Farms to get myself fried chicken, and on my way out, there was a trash can outside the door of this uh, courtyard. Uh, Sweets? No, not maybe? Courtyard Sweets. Spring Hill Sweets. Okay. Okay. There was a trash can right outside the door leading on the path to Royal Farms. And I put whatever the water box and I had left in the trash can. And I went, I got my fried chicken. And as I'm eating my chicken, I'm like, oh, I really want that Suboxone. <laughs> <laughs> so I went back. And there before the grace of God was my Suboxone, man, because this is Delaware County, man. I'm stunned that the Suboxone pups didn't sniff it out. <laughs> it was still there on the top of the trash. Wow. Damn. You left it there. You would have, if you really wanted that party to be over, you would have flushed it down the toilet. Or, I know. Yeah. Because at the other hotel, at a different time, I did that with the, all the coke I had. Flushed it? Yeah. Oh, I, down the sink. How much? It was a lot. It was um, most of an eight ball. I had, uh, wow. I had partied for like an hour with it. <laughs> and then I was like, this is so sad, even by my standards. I can't keep doing this. And it was the only time I've ever... Flush drugs. Flush drugs without the cops currently busting in the door. <laughs> yeah. Do you think in hindsight it wasn't the drugs that were making you sad? It was the hotel in your hometown that was the sad part? It was pretty bad. And Chris, <laughs> part of what was so sad is I didn't get the room I wanted. Like, it, it was, I, <laughs> <laughs> like brother, I'm checking in at, at fucking 8 a.m. on a Monday. It's like, you, I know there's better rooms than this one that you're giving me. Because I was starting to get paranoid because... It's uh, whatever the executive inn was on Baltimore Pike. Yeah. I don't know what it's called now, but there's maybe like four separate rows of rooms. And I got a room facing the main street, which is Baltimore Pike. And I was starting to go into like uh, panic mode. I'm like, if my wife drives past here, she's going to see my car. I was like, I need a room in the back of this fucking place. They wouldn't give it to me, man. Well, you could have just parked your car in the back. <laughs> All right. I might have to Jesus start doing coke Christ. again just so I can relive this moment, man. Yeah. It never sat well with me. Are we talking Suboxone strips or Suboxone Strips, pills? yeah. Strips, okay, okay. Yeah, they were tasty, too. And can yeah. you tell me everything about Suboxone strips? I have no idea. Do you know what that shit is? They're sublingual. Yeah. So, yeah, they go under your tongue and they dissolve, and they're less abusable. Whoa. I'm, I'm a Subutex guy. I like the pills because you can smoke them. Okay. But what's yeah. the uh, desired effect? It's basically like Diet Coke version of heroin. Like you, it kind of hits all the spots in your brain that you wanted to hit, but it's not that euphoric. It's, you know. And you just also don't end up dipping 
on the sidewalk. Like, no, yeah. You, well, you, you can you knock the fuck out. Could, my drummer yeah. was on Suboxone for a bit, and like he would pass out like in the middle of practice. Oh Jesus Christ! Yeah, yeah. yeah. But you can't overdose on him. <laughs> Pretty wild. Just picture like all the notes, like just like brown, <laughs> looking around, like Dave, are you all right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, drum drummers a, a a tough uh a tough instrument to play if you're whacked on drugs. Yeah, on opiates yeah. for yeah, sure. Yeah, opiates. Yeah, hard to keep a beat with that. Oh my god. But yeah, I, you're basically a metronome. You, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you like? What do you like? Wake back up and like feel like you, you didn't miss a beat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You just start racing the tempo back. Yeah, dude. It's it's pretty wild to watch. But uh, he was an amazing drummer, so he made it all work. You yeah. Know? Okay. Good. Yeah. I, I was kicked out of a band called Heroin Face for being a heroin addict. <laughs> 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 were you really? I was a bass player in a band called Heroin Face. Yeah. And they were like, "Sorry, man, we don't we don't tolerate this type of well, behavior." That, yeah. It was like a none of them did heroin, and I secretly had a heroin addiction, and then they found out, and I ended up pawning a guitar that wasn't mine. And <laughs> was yeah. it somebody in the bands? It was somebody in the band, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you help him look for it, too? Yeah, of course. So I was, yeah, like, living up to the name there. of the band. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, that was the energy of the band, I assume. Yeah. it was called Heroin Face, and, and no. I mean, yeah, they not as advertised. Out. No. You're better off without those posers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Phonies. But this fellow that I mentioned a minute ago, Raul Meza, uh, he initially went to jail. Right, so when he was 15, he shot somebody. And uh, when he was in his early 20s, he killed an eight-year-old kid and left their body by an elementary school. And he got oh out God. after 11 years. He was sentenced to 30 years. He got out after 11 years, which is fucking insane. So naturally, he picks up right where he left off. And he violated his probation at, or his parole. And uh, he ended up going back uh, till the early 2000s. Yeah, he goes back to the early 2000s, uh, violates it again, and he's in until 2016. As soon as he gets out, he admits to killing a person, another lady, but they never figured out who it was that he admitted to killing. But then he kills his roommate, and he kills uh, a neighbor lady of his, and those are the ones that he gets popped for, that he actually calls 911 on himself for. When was that phone call? How many years ago? It was recently. I think that was 2023. Wow. Last year, Jesus. Sounds like he was just addicted to like the prison system. Like getting back into like that structure, right? There's other stuff you can do to go back. Yeah. Yes, I agree. You don't have to kill your neighbor, man. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> They'll get you, man. But I mean, he's at this point, he's like, what do I have to do? Like he, uh-huh. he already murdered somebody at 15, right? With a gun. Mm-hmm. And I mean. Well, he didn't kill them. He okay. shot them. Okay. But what, what, Jared, uh, what do you think is the most common thing that the guys do to just get thrown back into jail or prison? Um, I knew a guy named One Punch who was a Mexican guy, and he he would always just steal a car and go on like a low speed chase, oh. and like a joy ride, you know, through Los Angeles, and then, you know, eventually surrender and get to go back to prison. That sounds very chill. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> probably yeah. the coolest way I've yeah. ever heard. Yeah. yeah, just posing no threat the entire time, just being like real low key about it. Even yeah. One Punch is a very chill uh-huh. name. It's I don't like, want to find twice, out how he got that name. <laughs> yeah, well, his name was Carlos Mercado, which is a weird name because Mercado I think means market. <laughs> 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 and he was, you know, a giant dude, and and uh, you know he he was cool and everything. But yeah, you get to do the low speed chase, and you get to wave. To, you know, you're on the news, you get to see your family oh, and stuff. That's so cool, man. <laughs> you, get <laughs> you get to check in with relatives you haven't seen in a while. Yeah. yeah, they know. They, then they know you're safe. You know, yeah. they know yeah. you're, where you're going and everything. So, yeah, that's oh, a pretty common. Way. That's got to be so cool to just like call your mom, and be like, "Yo, put on the news, <laughs> yeah. and go out, then go outside, <laughs> <laughs> then put some money on my books." Yeah. yeah, it's a lot better than going to like holidays with the families, and they're like, "Are you still doing that jail thing?" <laughs> they see it in action, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm fascinated, as I think a lot of people are, with jail and prison. And Jared's book, uh, Crooked Smile, I mean, it, it's fucking batshit insane. I can't encourage people to go check out this book enough. You can get it at Amazon.com. Jared, anything that you want, want to mention about the book that you think might appeal to people that that's relative to anything we spoke about? Yeah, th- thanks, Mike, uh, first of all, for praising the book. I mean, uh, I haven't murdered a child or anything, and I haven't done any kind of violent crime. But the, but the book is mo- mostly about drug addiction and homeless homelessness i was homeless in california for many years and uh, on skid row and uh, a criminal and and did have some experience going to jail for you know i i went to longest time i went there was six months and i learned a lot about the prison system and all that so uh 
It's a pretty funny book, and it's uh, if you're into shenanigans involving crack cocaine and going to jail and all that and living on the street. And, uh, yeah, if you want an education on that stuff, check out Crooked Smile. There's, there's one, one of the things that, that I really loved a lot about the book was uh, when you're speaking about your time uh, working for the cartel in Santa Cruz and getting fired by the cartel. Not, not like violently fired, just let go by the cartel. <laughs> Which I never knew was uh, an option for them. Yeah. Dude, it's so cool of them to do that. <laughs> yeah, well, it was more of like a task rabbit situation. You know, where I, was like, <laughs> where I was like contracted just to deliver small amounts of heroin. And, um, and as a requirement for my job, I actually had to use meth because I was a heroin addict. So they didn't, uh, Hugo didn't trust me to drive and deliver heroin and not fall asleep while driving. So I, I had to snort a line of meth before every shift. Was he a Murder Face fan? He was familiar with... Uh... <laughs> <Whoa>. <laughs> he, uh... I'm sorry, Heroin Face. Oh, no, no, no. He Well, actually, hero I was in Heroin Face in Santa Cruz, but uh, no, he was not. In, you know, I, he drove a two-door Ford truck and played mariachi music. And, you know, oh. I don't think he was big into, like, the punk rock scene. But, okay. uh, you know, he they, they were cool, but his rule was you can't smoke the meth. You have to snort mm -hmm. the meth. And, Dude. of course, that, you know, made me curious, and I eventually smoked the meth. And, uh, or I took, you know, I took... <laughs> Do not press that red button. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he was actually correct. I mean, when you smoke meth, you, you go insane, you know, as opposed to just snorting it, where... No, I'm not recommending snorting it, but it's it's <laughs> yeah. definitely more manageable. It's definitely more of like an Adderall feel. Yeah. Whereas mm -hmm. if when you smoke it, you will uh, develop insane theories about the CIA working with the cartel to kill you. Dude. And uh, yeah, Hugo wasn't a fan of those conspiracy theories. And yeah, uh, That's going to fuck up somebody's delivery, yeah. uh, <laughs> <laughs> delivery prowess if you're constantly thinking you're about to get bopped by Hugo plus CIA. Yeah, exactly. So uh, they eventually after, after I lasted about four weeks and then they, yeah, they asked me to turn in my badge and oh, not, not work for them Dude, anymore. I can't believe they made you snort meth like every shift that's like at, at a training day like when the guy yeah. like, makes the cop so it's in the system remember any yes yeah on? although I this is much like more practical wet. like yes this is like yeah. this isn't just like all right i want to make sure you're one of us like no like you're going to fall asleep on the job yes yeah 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 he definitely what it wasn't to see it wasn't to make sure i wasn't working for the police or anything because i was a customer of his for like a year or two yeah so like he knew i was i was legit and everything and it was really just like he knew i was a sleepy junkie you know, yeah. So he was like, you got to do meth or you're going to, you know, crash your car and get arrested. And then the whole operation goes up. So mm -hmm. it was incredibly practical and uh, it wow. did make me work pretty well. Yeah. Meth will help you work. <laughs> yeah, I got to imagine it's uh, a couple steps above Adderall and Adderall, you know, my room's never cleaner. Exactly. Yeah. And when I'm on Adderall, Damn it, you guys are really selling meth to me right now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, I wrote my uh, the my college thesis on meth within about three days. How is it with weight loss? Incredibly. <laughs> oh good. man. Oh my god. <laughs> we gotta find some meth. That <laughs> Do you don't eat for days. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what? Do you not eat for days if you're? Uh, oh yeah. You, you're on you're, a binge. It's more like Bender. seventy seventy two hours off sleep and food. Uh -huh. Then you eat wow. like a like a Jack in the Box sandwich. Then you go to sleep for twenty four hours, and you just kind of do that until you weigh about ninety pounds. Oh, my man. God. Yeah. And how long do you think those results would take? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, I mean, instantly. If you need, if you have a wedding coming up or something, and you need a wedding. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can lose 20 pounds in two days. I mean, man. and it de depletes you of all that water weight and stuff. Yeah. Oh, and, man. Uh, You're talking to the right boys, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, just yeah. Give, give us a month, man. Yeah. We can do it. I think we can all get uh, addicted to meth. You could get a yeah. six-pack within a month. Oh, my God, man. Yeah. Man. What the? And probably end up in jail and yeah. you know, probably destroy your life. But, but, uh, it is unfortunate. Yeah. I mean, I've relapsed because like, so I remember I got sober one time and, and when you get sober, you get kind of fat, you know? And like some guy was like, man, you got tits now. Like you got sober. And I was like, I'm just doing that. And then I, I actually relapsed and did meth. Wow. Yeah. Wasn't even that fat. Someone just made one comment. Damn. You, know, you got body oh, shamed into I relapsing. I got body shamed. <laughs> <laughs> God. <laughs> And that's why we don't like online bullying around exactly. here, right? <laughs> Dude, if I, if I did meth for one week and cleaned my entire house and finally put all my shit away, there is no way my lady would be mad at me. She would be like, yo, you, you have to do meth once a month. <laughs> Well, there, there's a flip side because eventually you get into like taking apart electronics and stuff and then you end up actually starting to make a pretty big mess. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> Complete opposite effect. Yeah, like there is a point where like you will take apart a refrigerator and, and, and you break everything. What's your mindset when you take apart electronics? Like what's the purpose behind that? There's just something where you're like, I'm going to make this work better. Or like, <laughs> I want to figure out how this works. Uh -huh. And then you yeah. end up, nothing works. Curiosity. Yeah. And YouTube's yeah. too boring. You need to do something with your hands. Exactly. Right? Yeah. yeah. And that's why I recommend crack, because my dad was a crackhead. <laughs> and, 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 he, and we'd go like on garbage night. It was like, I, my dad would take me out on garbage night. And we'd trash like night, pull, yeah, <laughs> pull every vacuum cleaner out of the trash. And then we'd come home and my dad would fix vacuum cleaners. Wow. All night, and we ended up having you know hundreds of working vacuum cleaners. So crack will actually, I think crack is more manageable in that regard. Wow. Whoa. Yeah. Huh. All right. Yeah. It's crack for us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but much more expensive. Much All more expensive. in favor of cracks yeah. AI. Yeah. <laughs> What's the uh, weight loss compared to to meth? Oh, crack, crack. Crack will make you w lose weight. All right. In, in a more manageable fashion. I. It, but uh, crack. The problem with crack is you will have zero dollars in your bank account. No. I mean, you can smoke two thousand dollars worth of crack in a day if you. What? Have... Dude, I thought crack oh, yeah. was the cheap stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. but well, you just need it constantly. That's the thing. A hit of crack is five dollars, but you can do a hundred hits of crack in a night. Every Whoa. five minutes, basically. Every five ten minutes, you, you want to? Yeah, you're taking a hit of crack. Yeah, I, I've <laughs> I've gotten a paycheck and like spent the whole paycheck in, in a matter of hours on crack cocaine. Damn. All right. Yeah. How the fuck? Do crackheads get high all day if they're homeless on the street? They're finding ways to. Uh, they're yeah. doing missions. Yeah. You, you yeah. just need yeah. five dollar missions. Dude. It's just yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. I've taken the shoes off my feet and like traded them yeah. to crack dealers for a five dollar rock. The first time I smoked crack <laughs> was wow. in Atlantic City, and I didn't plan on it. I just ran out of powder cocaine, and the guy, the homeless guy who got it for me, he's like, "Well, you can have some of this if you want," because I, I did buy it for him. So what a nice. He bump. was really offering yeah. me my drugs, <laughs> and. Uh, I was like, all right, I swore I was never going to do this, but fuck it. I'm already in trouble, so I'll do it. And uh, we just smoked crack until it was gone. And it got to the point where, like, like he's watching TV, and I'm just, I have this glass pipe, and I'm still continuing to light it. And I'm just lighting the glass. Like, there's nothing left in it. He's like, there's nothing left, man. I was, I was like, do you want to get more? He's like, yeah, if you got money. And I didn't have any more money. But I did have this new, um, not the iPod Nano. What was the, the iPod? The Shuffle? No, it's like it was like cell phone size, but it was pretty nice. The iPod Touch. It was an iPod Touch. Yeah. I had just got it a few days prior. I was like, I do have this. So we went to an all night pawn place in Atlantic City, and uh, I clearly woke the guy up, so he was not happy. Yeah. And I was like, What can you give me for this? I forget what I paid for it. It was like, it had to be a few hundred, right? It, I would say maybe under two hundred bucks because it didn't have a lot of memory, but it yeah. was still nice and it was new. He's like, I'll give you twenty dollars for it. I was like, No way! He's like, All right, I'm <laughs> that's four cracks. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you you have the cracks, or do I have to go next door? <laughs> and then he started to go back into his little room. I was like, Oh, wait, wait we'll take it. So I got twenty dollars for that, and that was like my introduction to just how fucked crack is. Yeah, the it, size it is of crack crazy, on its own man. merit. Yeah, you you were you were pawning electronics night one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I kind of, well, you know, went in Rome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's bad, man. I, I worked at a pawn shop in Florida one time and oh, then man. and then relapsed and then ended up very quickly becoming a customer of that pawn shop. Oh, uh, Would you put on a disguise so they didn't recognize you? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Jared, you'll sell it. you with the finger mustache. <laughs> <laughs> No, I got a hooker actually, just to get drugs, and then I ended up like adopting this hooker basically, oh, and like it's like the blind side. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the and didn't side. have sex with her once, <laughs> yes. just like became her friend, and then be I think I became her pimp because I was like driving her around, and she's like wait out here and like protect me. Accidental know? pimp. So yeah. Accidental Whoa, <laughs> that's a romantic comedy, dude. dude. <laughs> this is like the meth version of the bodyguard. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dude, are you drug Forrest Gump? <laughs> <laughs> and so I kept on smoking. <laughs> yeah. Dude, that's not have you ever have you ever thought about finding a way to reconnect with her? It would be pretty hard to contact her because I think back page is shut down. But um I think yeah, if I drove around South Florida for long enough, I could probably find her. Um yeah, it's pretty tough uh, because women in uh, it's really hard for them to get clean because they can just all there's like always a man that will, you know, be like, you can ride around with me and I'll fucking wait while you do tricks and all. You know, there's just yeah. always someone, whereas there isn't always someone for a man, you know, Yeah. except in San Francisco, you could probably 
Yeah, that's what we're talking about. We'll be there in October, by the way. (laughs) (laughs) And we'll have every color bandana under the damn sun. We'll we'll actually have them in our pockets, so. (laughs) Come pull one and make us do whatever the color means. (laughs) Yeah, we will literally do anything for money, man. I just just want to buy a house for my family. I will fucking wear any bandana you guys want me to wear. (laughs) Uh, But going back to the uh, the Austin murder scene, there's also a guy. So the the murders were, uh, the two murders were 2018 and 2024. They connected him through DNA and realized this one guy was responsible for both. It's pretty chilling because in the 2024 murder, there's there's video of him walking past somebody's ring cam with the lady that he killed. And he ended up bringing her into an abandoned home and he strangled her, sexually assaulted her, and killed her. So they still haven't found this fellow yet. Okay, so at least two of them are linked. Yes. And is there any... Potential for them to be linked to the bodies that have been it doesn't found seem like in it. the lake because okay. all the bodies oh man they're well, all male right yeah they're all male yeah I thought there were two females I don't think they're connected though yeah where they just washed up or were found in that same amount of time but do not seem to be associated they with. might have been ladies who were just taking a nap in the lake ladies do do that <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I had a nickel. They're all like effeminate Hispanic or Indian males. I there's a lot that, of them. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's a lot of guys too where it does seem like initially I didn't want to believe that guys are being drunk because I know especially if you have a significant other and you spend a ton of money and you end up someplace you didn't plan on ending up. You're just going to tell your wife like, oh, I think I got dosed last night. But there, I've seen enough of those stories in relation to the Rainy Street Ripper, which they're calling this guy. How cool is that? <laughs> I don't like sun. that they're calling him a ripper, though, because yeah. he's not ripping anybody. He's pushing guys in the water. Yeah, It's just a matter of alliteration <laughs> and convenience. Yeah, you're pushing guys in the pool. You're the Rainy Street Joker, if anything. <laughs> I lo- Dude, I love that you're like, oh, I, I don't like that he's called the Ripper, but you're totally fine with the Rainy part. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It shows how fucking dumb and star for attention I'm at, I am, where like this guy who's committing these horrific acts, I'm like, oh, yeah, Ripper. <laughs> well, I, I knew a guy that I knew an Indian guy that went down to Rainy Street to get drunk, and like a really attractive woman approached him at a bar, and they started hanging out, and then, you know, they went to a second location, and next thing you know, he like wakes up and his bank account's empty, and like what? so there's like a lot of that kind of stuff yeah. going on, and th- this seems like it's some something like that is sort of happening, mm-hmm. but instead of your bank account being drained, you're dead. You know, yeah, in, in the yeah. river. There have been a couple of guys that survived. There were two guys that were pushed off of of a bridge over either. I guess it's over the Colorado River, which leads into uh, Lady Bird Lake. Yeah. So Lady, Lady like- Boy Lake, I believe it's called. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so- <laughs> All right, maybe we call him the Lady Boy Lake lifeguard. Yeah. How's, that? <laughs> How's that? The news? You can have it for free. <laughs> So, so six or Rainy Street, uh, that's part of like uh, the entertainment district, correct? Yeah, like the like the nightlife party okay. area. And yeah. it seems like that's where all these guys are starting out, starting out at, mm-hmm. and then they end up walking along the Colorado River, which leads into Lady Bird Lake. And then at some point during their walks, they end up either in the water or pushed off of a bridge onto land that's directly next to the water. There were two guys that were severely hurt being pushed off of a bridge. So it's uh, probably 30, 40 foot drop from there, maybe? Off the bridge? Yeah, that sounds land. about right. Yeah. Oof. So it's survivable. But you're fucked up. Yeah. Yeah, there were two guys. Actually, the one dude, um, his name's Christian Pugh. He was on Ryan Sickler's podcast, The Honeydew. Oh, okay. He survived. He was like fucked up. And there's a, there's a really fucking intense video. When he was missing, he was missing for three days. His families, they're talking to this news network and they're filming them. And as they're filming them, the dad gets a call saying, hey, we found your son and he's alive. Man. Really fucking intense, man. But um, they didn't specify his injuries, but they said they were life altering injuries. However, uh, he goes on the honeydew and he's describing it's he's well enough now as to where he can go on Ryan Sickler's podcast to talk about Mm -hmm. how funny and fucked up the situation may have been. So do you think that every single person that's suspect? So like a suspect, uh, suspected murder rather, uh, has been pushed from a bridge. Is that like the main I think, theory? Yeah, I think they've been pushed. In it. But the weird thing is, is like, how do you gauge when a guy is going to become totally incapacitated? Because if you're if you're putting something in his drink at the bar, it's like you have a specific amount of time where you're just like you have to be able to gauge, I guess, on 
how much he's how much he weighs, how big he is, yeah. how much he's had to drink. Because like somebody could just if you're putting rohypnol in somebody's drink, I imagine like once it hits, they're just fucking out. Yeah, like fall off the bar stool, kind right. of right. Yeah. So I want this has to be somebody who's capable who can manipulate a guy's weight, and then actually get him to where he wants him to go. Well, it might not be that drug. There's a you know that other drug that they use in Colombia. I forget what, what it's called, but it kind of turns you into a zombie where you're still conscious, but you're not really, or you're still able to like move around and stuff. And you can kind of be told what to do. And they like direct people to the ATM and they make them withdraw all their money. It could be, it's called like scallopini. I know it's not called oh scallopini, God. but it's, oh, it's making me hungry. <laughs> Are we getting Italian after this? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. A, dr- a, a drug named scallopini that makes you take all your money out of the bank. What is it called? Steel scallopini? <laughs> so um, you're licking my yeah. lips. I have like, uh, the too. <laughs> <laughs> Because I, I was at this homeless shelter in L.A. and this guy went and got a hooker and um, he got hit with the scallopini and and and, <laughs> and he was on he was at a hotel <laughs> and he was on camera that he you know three days later he just like woke up under a car somewhere and all his money was gone and, and he went back to the hotel and they got the video footage and it was like he was walking around he looked really normal but he was yeah. with this hooker and these other two guys. And they were like directing him down the street. And I guess they directed him to the ATM. They got wow. camera footage of the ATM. He's just like over and every day, you know, withdrawing max limit of the ATM. Dude, and, I'm glad you yeah. brought that up. Um, is, do you know Scalopini? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> Shoot. All four of our bellies are growling. Yeah, right is, now. It, yeah I was just, is the mic picking <laughs> that up? Do you know if that's a benzo? Um, I don't know. I think it's like a, you know, it's derived from some plant or something. And it's really big in Colombia, I've heard. Okay. I don't know. It's, it might be a disassociative. I'm not sure. The reason why I ask is because one of the surviving victims, he tested positive for benzos. Okay. And, um, however, you describing that and somebody being able to be functional uh, relates. It might even be the same guy because they were talking about how he made over the course of a couple of days, made several thousands of dollars worth of purchases and also ATM withdrawals. And they're like, well, there were no, there, there were no uh, attempts at entering a pin that were wrong. So clearly whoever yeah. did this, was either knew your pin exactly or they were the luckiest fucking guy on the face of the earth. Yeah. So that yeah. sounds more fitting like for this guy where he's just like able to fucking enter the pin, get what he wants and then mm-hmm. move on and go to Walmart and charge fucking $800 worth of shit. My God, try arguing that with your bank when you have oh, like bank God. insurance. They're like, no, it's you in the video. Sorry. You lose all your money. <laughs> yeah. You know, you're like, you're blood. Yeah. Li- yeah. I had scallopini. It's like, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I can fucking tell. You, you ate at Remarco's fucking bar and grill, man. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you say like you got enough scallopini for the whole damn restaurant, man. What the hell? Yeah, how's the calamari, dickhead? <laughs> Did you say the restaurant was called Remarcos? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that thought you did. Oh, by the way, uh, we did not flip a coin at the beginning of this episode. We left the coin at home, but luckily I remembered to flip it before we left, and I lost then. <laughs> okay. Sorry, it's not on camera. Every episode, uh, I don't like true crime, mm-hmm. so when we started this podcast, I said, I'll do it, but at least give me a chance to flip a coin every week, and uh, if I win, we'll talk about the Impractical Jokers. Okay. And, uh, we're in th- year three, and I still haven't won. Oh, really? Yet. So, yeah. Yeah. The unluckiest man in the world right uh-huh. here. Yeah, yeah, you're sitting right next to him. Every week he yeah. flips the coin <laughs> on camera and they see he doesn't win. Well, I can't imagine a podcast episode about the Impractical Jokers being I can. that entertaining. I imagine it every oh, single shit. week. Uh-oh. Oh, Uh-oh. 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 Oh, wait, wait a minute. Listen, fair is fair and I can't believe we forgot, but uh, I treated myself to a golden Mickey Mouse coin when I was in Disney World. And where do you keep that? In my asshole. Where do you think I <laughs> keep it? In my wallet. Right now, yeah, you stepped out of the room to, to pull it out. Eh? Oh, no, it was in his asshole. Dude, that would be funny if, if the Rainy Street Ripper uh, came to get me and uh, he couldn't manipulate my debit card. So he's like, All right, let me see what else this dickhead has. He's, like, <laughs> he's got a golden Mickey Mouse coin. You just found in a bush with one of them over your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Maybe we'll start talking about the impractical jokers, right? Ah, God All right, we're still, we're still talking Austin murder. Thank one again. Uh, but there's been, uh, since 2008, there's been 20 bodies that have shown up in the river, but there's been an uptick in the last three years. So there's been 13 over the past two years. There was one recently found as, uh, uh, found as recently as August 6th. Whoa. Oh, wow. Jesus. Yeah. And they all, like, are floating, or, like, they wash up onto shore, or, like, not necessarily well, in the water at all? Uh, it, it's a combination of, of all of those. So there was one that seems like it was just uh, either a road rage incident 
that ended in a shooting or it was like an assassination style killing where a guy was shot and ended up in the, I heard about that. I think that was earlier this year or late last year, maybe. Okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, they're not all the same exact crime, right? Some of them are way more severe. I mean, it's all ending in death, but a gun just seems more, but now that they're starting to stack up more and more, it seems like police are much more hesitant, uh, or much more inclined to label something as being, oh, it's just a, you know, it's, it's an accidental death. And they're hesitant to rule it as a homicide. Yeah, that was big two years. When I lived here two years ago, there was, it, it, was, it was a really big deal because the police weren't saying that it was a serial killer because they weren't trying to scare people. And then it got political and people were saying, well, like, since a lot of the victims look pretty gay, it's like, a, it's like they're politically motivated to not want to find the killer, which uh, I think is bullshit. Whoa. But, yeah. Uh, you know, it's... It's Austin. It's 2024. I don't think, I think they're, if someone's gay, I think, you know, they're still going to try to find the murderer. Yeah. But, yeah. uh, yeah, most of the victims do look kind of gay. I wonder if there's like a, uh, like a police squad that's, that's their sole purpose is to determine how gay you look. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's a gay city because, uh, you know, in the South it's, it's been, it's always been the city where like, if you're from Alabama and you're gay and it's 1968 yeah. or something, you're probably going to move to Austin. Yeah. yeah. You know, so it's, it is kind of like the San well, Francisco even back the then it was, like Austin was like the safe haven for like gay dudes. Yeah. I think, I think it's has a, it has a pretty deep history of being like sort of a left leaning Southern city. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's the Asheville, North Carolina of Texas. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And if you go to 4th Street, there's like a pretty, you know, buzzing gay scene down there. You know, a lot of a lot of bars down there. And uh, Remember that for, for tomorrow night, Mike. 4th yeah. Street is where we're going to end up. <laughs> okay, thank you, man. Yeah, we're, we're, we're on the hunt for some scallopini boys. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for pointing that out, brother. Yeah, the scallopini, the scallopini squad is actually who determines how gay a victim is. There's some peeny boys right there. <laughs> but I mean, how much of this is just like, like the if everyone's partying by this river, how much of this is just people maybe accidentally falling in? Right? Yeah, that, like, that's a good point. Because I've been on that river uh, or that lake. And when it's like 105 degrees and everyone's like slamming like 12 packs of beer, and yeah. like it, it seems like someone could just die and float away, and then you find them at night. Yeah, yeah. You know that it, I think yeah, it's definitely a good chance that some of them are accidental. People are drinking hard on that river. Yeah, I right imagine. now, and it's 104 degrees. Yeah, you, know? you have to. I have to. I don't know if I would drink 10 beers outside in this heat. I love to drink 10 beers. Yeah. <laughs> And if I was out there, I would honestly probably just have a cooler full of cold water and like continually yeah. drink water. Yeah. It, yeah. Pushing guys in the water in Austin is almost the ideal crime for here because there's got to be a percentage of the cops that are just like, this is, these are just dudes partying too hard, yeah. passing out because they're dehydrated and ending up in the water. It's like the cleanest way to kill someone. Right. Just, just a little bump. You know? oh, I'm sorry, I didn't even see you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pardon me. <laughs> well, there's like that. Sometimes there's thousands of people out on that lake. Yeah, you know, all yeah. on paddle boards, all with their own personal twelve pack. Like, you could just fall under a paddle board Dude, and get. It's like exactly. Uh, yeah, it's like Woodstock yeah. ninety nine on. No the one's got a buddy system on a no. leash. No. Like, I've seen it. It's crazy. Yeah, and if you yeah. and your buddies are doing like Marco Polo, and somebody comes by with that paddle, clocks you in the head. Dude, lakes are no joke, too. You don't yeah. float in a lake. Like, you sink to the fucking bottom like a stone. I would not even be, have qualms. Like, if I was on a paddleboard, I would be in my PFD the entire time. Yeah. If I was in a tube, I'd be wearing a life vest. What do I any swear of those God. words mean? I don't know. <laughs> paddleboard? <laughs> qualms, PFD. Personal flotation device? Ah, okay. Indeed. Personal wow. thong. He picked it up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I got scallopini brain. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Stinkers, we know you love your alma mater. Show your support by betting on your team this football season. My bookie lets you get in on the action with their amazing sports book and casino platform. You don't even need to download an app. Just click my link, sign up, and you're good to go. Lay down your investment before the season starts so you don't have to stress about it later. I look forward to betting on college football this year, and I'm also going to bet on our beloved Philadelphia Eagles to win it all. Go Birds! Dude, go every birds, year I, I place bets on these college games, I end up winning more money than I ever dreamed of all right well i hope i enter your dreams at some point so you can dream of money in me too jake i'll put something in you that's for sure all right i don't want to do this <laughs> back anymore. to the endorsement <laughs> <laughs> but i do want to go to my bookie to place my bet on my eagles man but there's no need to download an app just click the link in the show notes sign up and you're ready to bet 
Lock your futures in now while you're waiting for the season to begin. Use promo code STINKER, that's S-T-I-N-K-E-R, to claim a bonus up to 1000 bucks on that first deposit. That's STINKER, S-T-I-N-K-E-R, to start the college football season off with house money. Don't ever miss out on the action. Bet anything, anywhere, anytime, only with my bookie. Um, oh, what did I want to say to you? There was something relative to what you, what you had mentioned. Would you wear a life vest if you were on a lake? I mean, if... On a, I, on a thing that could get away from you? I just float, if you man. Fell off. I just, I think I'm safe. <laughs> as long as I can stay upright, you know, I'll be good. No, the lake is deep and you're in the middle of it. And you fall off your paddleboard. Uh, yeah, then I'll wear a life vest. Okay. The thing I wanted to mention is that uh, you can't swim in Lady Bird Lake. You can only ride a uh, you can paddleboard. I think you can kayak. And tube. But there were a couple of people that died when they uh, when they initially opened the lake, and then they I think they overreacted and then they outlawed swimming. Well, oh. it, hmm. it makes sense. There's a lot of public bodies of water. I feel like that you have to be in a vessel. But like, what happens if you fall off your paddleboard you or get fall out in. of your canoe? You know what I mean? Like, it's not. Do you get a ticket if you're like you're swimming, even though you're trying to get back to your <laughs> fucking vessel when, how, what do they you mean give you a break new how like did they just damn that within the past couple decades no. to be a lake Hang on, let me look it up and find out i think they... no cannonballs that's for sure that's <laughs> number one no cannonballs no dice for you huh no dude i wouldn't do it people definitely swim in i mean I, i've seen you know homeless people bathe in there and people are yeah that's another thing could these guys could be homeless mm-hmm. yeah i don't know you know, you see them all, like if you go to Barton Springs, there's a fence where you don't have to pay if you're beyond the fence. And it's like, you know, lined with homeless people staring at women in their bikinis. And yeah. One of those guys could definitely fall in. Uh-huh. All right. So it says, uh, oh, damn. Wait, is there a wall of dudes just like jacking off then? Basically, yeah. Really? Yeah, oh, kind of. Yeah. Are you streaming on OnlyFans right now, Mike? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mentioned I'm trying to buy a house, so I'm double dipping right now. But, uh... Thank you, Scalopini Boy, for the donation. <laughs> but it says Lady Bird, Lake, Lady Bird Lake has been off limits to swimmers since 1964, but it's not water quality issues that are behind the ban. There, there were a couple deaths early on, and that was what I thought was the reasoning behind it. Uh, it cites environmental dangers, and it says uh, shallow soil and unusually high rainfall rates uh, can make swimmers susceptible to fast moving waters. And flooding can take a toll on water quality. Hmm. But it it is a dammed. It, it's not a real lake, right? It it is dammed. It's just a dammed section of the uh, Colorado River. Okay, right? yeah, yeah. Colorado River of Texas, which yeah. is not the Colorado River that originates in Colorado. I mean, just close to Texas Mexico. River, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <seriously. laughs> huh. Yeah, but I do want to take a trip down there if you boys are up for it at some point yeah, before man. we yep. go. Yeah, we haven't been down to uh, Rainy Street yet, but... Oh, I'd check it out. Yeah, Rainy... You know, the inter- the interesting thing about Rainy Street is that it used to be the hood, and, like, a lot of those houses were crack houses. Whoa. And then they've taken these, like, kind of, like, ranch-style houses and turned them into clubs. It's really weird. Dude, that's we watched crazy. The, we it's, watched the video. Yeah. Remember the guy said he got sma- He got beat up by a lady? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, a, a guy was a guy got beat up by a lady at a Rainy Street bar, and it just looked like a fucking house. That was a it's bar. It's a house. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, they, yeah, it was just a house, and uh, a guy bumped into a lady, and she she smashed him and beat him with a glass. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was just the hood, you know, twenty years ago. That's so crazy that yeah. they turned all these crack dens into like bungalow bars. Yeah, you're just walking the street. Smart then, thinking. Yeah, yeah. no, really. <laughs> and then they'll knock down like three of them, and then build like a high rise Hyatt hotel or something. You know, there's a bunch of hotels down there, and yeah, it's weird. I mean, it's you know, I guess it's gentrification. I don't know what you want to call it, but. If you talk to a real Austinite, they're like, that's where you used to go buy crack. Damn. Oh my God. Yeah. Are you able to like uh, walk open container on like raining street? I don't know if it's legal, but you could probably get away with that. Yeah. Or 6th Street, I'd imagine. Okay. Yeah. It's a pretty wild town Yeah. at night for that kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. We haven't really experienced the uh, the wilder side on this trip. It's been very chill. Uh, we haven't really, really gravitated toward any areas where people are partying heavily. 
So yeah, we'll yeah. be in the neighborhood tonight. I'm sure Sixth Street will have some action on Thursday night. Still Thursday, Thursday, bro. School's about to start. You know what that means? <laughs> Come <Rocky> children. <laughs> <laughs> you got two of them. Yeah, no, real big headed bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Like those bookworms, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they'll be out there. Yeah, because college is about to start, and they're all in town. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's going to be pretty pretty wild out there. Yeah, yeah. I planned this trip. Um, yeah. This time for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, homeless lady. When I first came, a homeless lady tried to trip me on 6th Street. I put her foot out and tried to trip me. Yeah, like cartoon style. They just put it out. Yep. Like, pff, man, maybe that's what's happening to all these guys. They got like <laughs> a, a Looney Tunes style homeless lady. <laughs> oh my god, Jack the Tripper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we came across a guy that uh, it's the only person I've come across so far in Austin that's really uh, made me a little uneasy. But when we were leaving lunch the other day, a guy came up and he was asking for money for beer for somebody else. Is that what mm -hmm. he was asking for? I think so. Yeah. And he had a, he had staples in his arm, but like part of the wound was still open. So I was like, "Oh, buddy, I hope this ends soon." What a weird um, deviation from "I need money for beer." Ah, my buddy really needs a beer, and I'm the only guy that can ask for beer money. For <laughs> I'm his <laughs> buddy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If I had cash, I might have given it because I felt like that was a pretty cool bro move. Yeah, like my yeah, buddy yeah. needs a couple beers. It's like, all right, man, go make his day. I'll usually ask people, like, if they ask me for money, I'll say, "Are you going to buy heroin, heroin with this money?" And if they say yes, I give them money. <laughs> and if they say no, then I say, "Well, then I'm not giving you money." And then you must not need it that bad. <laughs> yeah. Or, or if they, or if they ask for meth, they say, or I say, "You're going to buy meth," and they, if they say yes, I don't give them the money because you don't need meth. Yeah, you, you need will heroin. suffer without heroin. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I, I always. I always give money to heroin addicts. What about crack? Where does crack fall in no, that? You don't need crack, crack, no, because crack, you know, you you just need five bucks, and it's really easy to make five bucks, and mm. you should yeah. go work for it. You know, <laughs> yeah, you've got the energy, you know. <laughs> what do you think is the most common five dollar crack task? I think you know. I used to climb into dumpsters and find receipts behind CVS, and it would be like seven dollars bought some you know uh, eyeshadow or something that i'd go into the cvs grab some eyeshadow return it mm. and they would you know it's seven bucks they usually don't make a fuss they say okay we know you we know this isn't real uh -huh. but okay here's seven bucks that's a pretty easy one um i used to steal red bulls i knew a mexican guy that would buy them for a dollar each so you know you buy you steal five red bulls real quick you get five bucks that's fucking 75 percent off dude that's i would buy them for a dollar each I know, yeah, it, yeah. yeah. It, or if you go to the bars, like bars in downtown LA, like I, you know, every morning I'd wake up like in an alleyway somewhere and I'd go steal two 12 packs of Red Bulls. That's $24. And then I'd go sell them to the bars because the bars, you know, they don't care. They just need some Red Bulls to make some Red Bull and vodka mm -hmm. that night. So that was a pretty uh, good wake up little, how, little thing that I had. Going. How would you find the Red Bull though? Like, where, like, where would you steal a Red Bull from? Like a uh, Target. Target? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. Just bro. walk yeah. in, just take it out kind of thing? Yeah, walk in with a backpack empty, put the two 12-packs in my backpack, walk yeah. out. Uh, you're basically allowed to do that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. They don't <laughs> stop you. Yeah. That, well, this was, you know, this was eight, nine years ago when you still, occasionally you'd have to like, you know, I had a partner and we used to run like, you know, he'd run a screen or whatever, like yeah. if there's a security guard and... Uh, you know, we had a system. Obviously, now you can just rob people at gunpoint with no punishment. But yeah, this was in the olden days. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus, man. Yeah, when they used to chase people out of the stores and stuff like that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or like at Kmart, I got snatched one time. You know, they, they'd really snatch you. They'd grab you. Yeah. And pull you in the back and tell them, I'm going to call your mom or whatever. And yeah, rough you up a little <laughs> bit. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, we got another scalopini Kmart. boy here yeah. today. <laughs> Felt the pressure from the blue light that they're putting on you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this wasn't Red Bull related, but when I was a kid, the only time I got in trouble is, well, no, one of the few times I got in trouble as a kid, uh, there was a Sears in my neighborhood, and there was a four-story parking lot, and my boys and I were throwing rocks off the top of cars below, and Jesus. security guys came and rounded us up, and they little baby catted us. Oh, man. And brought us to the office, and uh, they called all our moms, and the guy's like, who's your teacher at St. Alice? I was like, Mrs. Pauly? He's like, oh, I know her. And I was like, oh, my God, my life. <laughs> 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 Why did you think that getting in trouble outside of school was going to incur more punishment from your teacher? Brother, I was like 10. 
But it's like it's a lady that I held in high regard and a lady that believed in me and the only teacher who upgraded me uh, from the low level reading group to the smart reading group. That's nice. Yeah. Did the cops really tell her? No, he didn't know her. He was just being a jerk off. Mm. But I was throwing rocks at cars, so I could see why <laughs> yeah. he was concerned. It was enough to get me to not do it again. Man, I've never been threatened by a teacher outside of school and it had any effect on me. Right? Yeah. yeah. From like the jump, you're like, this bro, you're, yeah. you're out of bounds. Like, it's summer vacation, bitch. This is fucking, yeah. Yeah. I'm on base. <laughs> you didn't have anybody that you looked up to? As a teacher that yeah, I well, didn't want to let down? I mean... When you put it that way, Mike, Jesus <laughs> Christ. No, I guess not. <laughs> I had a couple of teachers that I liked, but I don't... I didn't worry about them catching me getting high in the woods with my boys in seventh grade, you know? Damn. Getting all fucking fried up. Oh, man. I remember seventh grade, this bitch math teacher. It was like a week after my pup-up had died. Oh. And like we had like done the services and stuff, and it was like the first day of school or She's second like, day. Right, in. If Jake's grandfather is six feet deep, <laughs> <laughs> and he leaves Jake five hundred dollars, <laughs> uh, the estate taxes three percent. Yeah, man, I just remember. I'm sitting there and I just like started getting emotional and I like you'd feel the tears coming in seventh grade just like quietly crying at my desk and she calls me out in front of the whole fucking class. Uh, fucking what are you doing crying? You crying? Cl-? And I was like, oh, I didn't get made fun of for it or anything like I just lost a fucking grandfather. Yeah, they knew. Yeah. Did she? Uh, I guess she didn't, but she was just a fucking bitch. Did dude. you pull that out of your sleeve? Yeah. yeah. Did you say I'm sorry? I'm yeah, I, I said that. And deceased. I said something along the lines like, you know, when because w- once you caught attention to it, you never like when you're like really emotional, you're like, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, never one of crying. Yeah, I'm 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 crying. Yeah, i Dude, you got snot bubbles come out every time you <laughs> yeah. say pop pop. <laughs> and I'm doing that thing where like I'm already a chubby kid stuck in the desk. You have to stop. Oh, no. Go out to the hall. Or she's like, go to the office. He like, gets up to the desk, it's still on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, walking down to the office. <laughs> <laughs> pop up. <laughs> yeah, so dude, no, I had no teacher role models. What an that. insane bitch, man. Yeah. Dude. I mean, yeah, I think a, a good general rule of thumb is that, it, that if you see a crying kid that is <laughs> above two, Something probably fucked up has happened. So yeah. <laughs> maybe give him a little bit of a grace period. Yeah, dude, it was wild. Dox that bitch, dude. Yeah, totally. I, I can't even remember her name. I'll find it out. <laughs> yeah, we'll figure it out. We're coming for you. <laughs> pop, pop. Jared, do you have any nightmare teachers? <laughs> I had a teacher named Mr. Cowherd. Not Mr. Coward. Okay. You know, he oh, made, he made, and he was actually that super shit. cool. He, 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 uh, he really liked Primus. Oh. And he was like a you know, ex like metal guitar player guy, but we'd get high and then he would know that we were high and he would like make us come to the front of the class and like ask, he was a history teacher. He'd like make us talk about history and, <laughs> oh, oh man. And then, uh, he, <laughs> and then he became the girls soccer coach, which was very weird because he didn't play soccer. And then he, and then, it, <laughs> and then like, he was also years, blind. <laughs> <laughs> and then 10 years later he got busted trying to meet a, uh, like a girl, like a 15 year old girl yeah. in the park. Oh my God. So he was a pedophile. I don't know. That's kind of what soccer coaches do. Yeah. Exactly. You just meet a bunch of six year old girls in the park every day. <laughs> yeah. But it's it just, my job. I was scouting. It just sucked because he, you know, he introduced us all to Primus and then yeah. turned, oh, no. turned out to be a pedophile. That's tough because once you get convicted of pedophilia, your name is Mud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would put a tinge on. Primus for me, probably. <laughs> yeah, it was rough, yeah. I might have waited a couple of years before I got back into them. Molest Claypool. <laughs> All right, I'm finished. <laughs> what else do you guys want to talk about? Too many punnies. <laughs> <laughs> ba, 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 ba. Was there another um, Austin murder related thing that you had, or did we do all three? That was all three. Okay. Aside from that, it's funny because I've, I've loved everything about this trip. This is really a wonderful city. It's there's so much good in this city. There's so many nice people. There's so many great food. There's it's just a nice place. It is hell on earth though. It is hot as shit. Yeah, yeah. fucking crazy. But out there, I feel yeah. like after a couple of days, it was much easier to get acclimated than that first day. Coming out from the airport, it was like, whoa, my yeah. god. Yeah, and it's just this week. Like I heard last month, it was mostly 80s. Mm-hmm. You know, not too bad. Shit, I can 
if I lived here, I could just escape for August. Yeah, yeah, yeah you, you just know? leave. Yeah, for real. Yeah, yeah. And he look, the breeze is blowing. Mm-hmm. At least got a hot breeze today. Nighttime's fine too. Nighttime's pretty nice. It was beautiful yeah. last night. Yeah. Yeah, there's good swimming. You know, there's a lot of young, vibrant people. A lot of smiles. And at, all know. the ACs rocking in every building you oh, go to. Oh yeah, baby. Yeah. It's just it's really just getting from the front door to the car. Yeah. And then <laughs> and then the first twenty seconds in the car. Yes, yeah. it's exactly. like the worst moment of your yeah. life. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like every building and house could have a chute, which leads to, from the front door to your driver's side door. Yeah, yeah, that would be ideal. You need a remote starter. Yes, with the Definitely. AC rocking is the best move. Yeah, yeah. we went the, our first like full day here. We went to the clock tower on UT's campus where the massacre happened, and as we wandered around out there, we were just like. This has to be the most anyone has ever suffered out here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we were. I think it was five sec, five minutes, and I was just my shirt was completely drenched, mm-hmm. just like my back dripping. Yeah, it was so funny how quickly everybody's mood changed. <laughs> like we were out of the car for five minutes, and we turned into fucking like day eight Lord of the Flies. <laughs> <laughs> I lost my glasses. I was talking with a conch. I hit him with a rock. I still feel bad about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it barely made a dent, but. <laughs> Well, the winter's nice. I mean, it'll, and then it'll ice over like three times, and then you like crash Ooh. your car, you like slide all over the Whoa. place. No but, shit, it yeah. really does ice over? It'll ice over, yeah. Oh, man. This hill's yeah. got to be nuts. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah it's dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> Dude, we've seen so many near misses at this little intersection. With no rain or anything. Yeah. Just People coming down that hill. Too much fast. speed, I guess. By yeah. near misses, do you mean ladies you might want to marry? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Mike. That's exactly what I meant. <laughs> Oh, that would be a good rom-com. It's like a lady who you almost smash with your car, and it's like, damn, I almost made you my wife. Oh, and there's no red light cameras here, so you can just go what? through red lights. That is. That's pretty nice. What a relief. Whoa, <laughs> I haven't seen anybody doing that. And it's, yeah, Southern Hospitality, they just don't do it, but you, it's nice to know you can. Have you? I, you know? I was going to have my... Uh, my little hands in my pockets for the next couple of months waiting for the rental car to uh, report the red light to Mike <laughs> that I ran today. But I was right behind a truck. Okay. And by the time I saw the light, I was at the intersection and it turned red right before it. Yeah. You're right in a truck's cops, wake. It doesn't yeah. count. Huh? No, you'll be You're okay. In the truck wake. Yeah. 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 Truck no, wake. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. No cameras here. I've never been pulled over here. I've never uh, gotten a parking ticket here. Wow, we really? saw we yeah. saw a DUI Never. test happening when we pulled. We did got yeah. off the exit. That was great. Yeah. crushing. Yeah, you'll get man. that. Yeah, she you'll was, get a DUI. Yeah, she but, had you know. perfect balance. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I hope that she was under the limit. Nothing feels better than nailing the dance. Yeah, and then being point zero six. Yeah, she was clearly watching the Olympics this summer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. John immediately started scrambling to start blasting. I walked the line from the car radio. And <laughs> I think she might have heard the first uh, couple notes. <laughs> yeah, really a wonderful city, man. How long did you live here? I lived here for about two years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. During COVID. Yeah, I was living in California and just moved here. And it, or I visited here. It was just so happy, so nice and affordable. Yeah, good spot. Good food. Oh, my God. Yeah, we've been so lucky. Every place we've gone has been heaven. Incredible heavy. food, yeah. man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I like to spend time down here. I have to do, you know, three weeks to a month, a year here, yeah. at least. Just think about all the uh, head you can get from big head bitches. That you oh yeah, so dude, <laughs> gotta be gotta be while school's in session, so I can get that big lesson. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what do you think your wife would say if she saw you getting head from an abnormally sized head woman? <laughs> this is exactly what you think. <laughs> I don't, I don't know, but we would be in danger. <laughs> what do you want to eat today? Um, oh man, I drove by Franklin. Oh, oh yeah. It was, was there a line? Like one forty-five by the time I was almost or passing it. Very short line. Oh fuck! Why didn't you get some? I, we were coming back to <laughs> the equipment to do the podcast. Oh yeah, like yeah, we that'll... cannot eat before or after a podcast. Well, what do you want me to stand in line in the fucking heat and guess what you guys want? Yes. I mean, we're both overweight. You yes, probably can't go wrong at a barbecue anything. place. Well, I apologize about that. All right. Well, don't let it happen again, man. Well, it won't. Yeah. Tomorrow I will do a better job. 
<laughs> well, it's good news that we can probably go tomorrow and it won't be super crowded. I would yeah. like that. Okay. Yeah, let's do that. Do you have a favorite place to eat in Austin, Jared? Uh, I like Loro. I ate at Loro last night. It's like a, I think like a Korean guy moved here from California and did like a half barbecue, half Korean Ooh. spot or something. It's like it's like twelve dollars for dinner. I mean, it's crazy. I mean, Man. just like the price of everything is so crazy. Uh, it's delicious. I like um, Style Switch Barbecue. That's I think it's called Style and Switch Barbecue. Styles Switch? I think so. Somebody recommended that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The best Brussels. I think about the Brussels sprouts. Like, I live in California now, uh-huh. and I think about the Brussels sprouts probably like once a month. Whoa. I do, I do need some yeah. kind of... I mean, imagine vegetable. thinking about Brussels sprouts. Yeah. Like, yeah. that's how good they are. <laughs> that's insane. The fact that that's what you're referencing, I'm like, ah, I'd fuck that place. But then I'm like, if it's that good, I got to try it. Yeah, uh, it's probably, crazy. Yeah, we should definitely consume some kind of vegetable today. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, it's Just, great. It's owned by like a black cowboy family. Amazing. Nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of good places. There's uh, I like uh, T. What is it? What's that uh, burger spot? Perry's T J. Oh, Perry's T Perry's T Perry's P Perry's. Yeah. <laughs> it's just it's mortal amazing. enemy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like three dollars. It's just I mean, you know. dude. Yeah, I, I look at their menu. It was like three fifty for a hamburger, like four dollars and ten cents for dude. When you're putting a dime in your fucking yeah. burger price, yeah. What a fair business owner you right? are. Yeah, for real. Yeah, dude. Yeah, we went. I mean, you you had Culver's the other yeah. other day. Yeah, great. Man. That yeah. place was that was my first time you having that. Very good stuff. The cheese curds. The, yeah, the cheese curds yeah. are fucking out of this world. The, as far as a smash burger goes, I feel like that place is on a level with Five Guys. Yeah? I think so. Much better because uh, I went to Five Guys two weeks ago. Just lunch for my son and I came to $53. Oh, oh my, my God. God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, I think I spent $12 at Culver's. Mm-hmm. And I was uncomfortably full until... The next morning, I yeah, think. I was so full it affected my mood deeply. <laughs> yeah, when we came back, I was like, I got to change the way I eat, man. This is this is yeah. too much. <laughs> yeah, when a fucking meal has you playing man in the mirror in the car, it's a problem. <laughs> yeah, we did get uh, that's floats dude, to yeah, we yeah. punish yeah. ourselves even more. Dude, that's every meal I have. That every meal I start eating, I'm like, all right, tomorrow's the day. I'm gonna enjoy this because tomorrow's the day everything changes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I'm going to start, wake up, just start doing sit-ups in the bed, you know? Just, that's where you do them. Yeah, you do them. doing spit-ups. <laughs> <laughs> bop, bop! <laughs> <laughs> what an evil bitch, man. I can't get over that lady. Oh, man. Yeah, God, I wish I remembered her name. What grade was this again? Sixth? Seventh. Yeah. Seventh. Yeah. 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 A little old to be crying in class. I'll give you her that. You were grieving. It was, dude, so it was like, my That's grandfather, too old to be he crying, died man. like so fast. Like, he was like, oh, he's sick. And then, like, within two weeks, he was dead. Yeah, that's an incredibly and then, sad thing to go through. And then I think I just saw, like, my dad cry for the first time. Because I got the funeral, and I was like, whoa. like Didn't know it was possible. Th- yeah, that, like, rocked my, like, thought process. I was like, I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah. That's why I cry in front of my kids all the time, man. <laughs> <laughs> just let it flow. You will get used to this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever cried in front of your kids? Uh... No, pro- probably not. I hope not. Jesus Christ. Um, I think there's been moments like when there were like babies, I was like, I'd get like happy tears in my eyes, but I wouldn't like yeah. ball out. Yeah. But yeah. About you, JD. I'm sorry. I was looking at the sweet Serrano Brussels sprouts over there. Inside, <laughs> so. <laughs> what was the question? Have you ever cried in front of your child? Uh, not yet. Um, I think I saved all my crying for dead grandparents when the baby was asleep. Oh. Um, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think I've done it in front of her yet. Should I do it sooner than later? I would, man. Get it out of the way. <laughs> Clean the pipes, man. Good way to play peekaboo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Where did go? Peekaboo. <laughs> yeah. My dad cried in front of me when I hooked up Netflix and he realized that it was wireless oh my and he God. cried about the state of the world of like how advanced it had gotten. It is pretty oh, cool, that's man. Beautiful. That rule, how old your dad? He, he would, this, he was probably 68 when that happened. And then he also cried when I told him that I did 23 and me, which made, it made no sense, but he watches a lot of, uh, he, wa- <laughs> he watches a lot of true crime and he was like, they're going to link me to, I was like, what did you do? 
<laughs> he's the Zodiac. Oh no! I was like, did you rape somebody? And he was like, no, no. But I was like, he he was like, I was around a, a murder one time when I was like 15, and like I might go to jail now because you did 23 and Me. Oh my God! Yeah, and he cried. That, Whoa! It, that, it can't work like that, can it? No, I question. You know what what his story really is behind that, but um, I don't know. He just got really emotional towards the end of his life about the the state of technology. Yeah, that's the, really the subject matter. It that is my one. <laughs> yeah. What year was he born? Fifty three. But then he smoked crack for like twenty years and then just woke up in like two thousand eleven. Okay, and was so like he, that's freaked like out. A, a tech coma, basically. He went you through kind a tech of coma. Ignore things around yeah. you. Yeah. And then you come out and you're like. Yeah, nothing's even attached to wires anymore. Yeah, yeah, what yeah, the fuck yeah. is going on? Like he had—he's never—he had—he's he passed, but he's never—he had never touched a keyboard in his whole life. Never touched a touched the computer keyboard. My wife's similar in that she's never touched the oven. It's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> yeah. So hopefully he's not featured on an episode of Little Stinkers. Oh my God! I yeah. don't think he killed anyone. I, you know, he's a good man. I don't think he killed anyone, but I believe that I won't go into details. But I, his friend killed somebody, and yeah. he was there, and he was he murdered. Was Jason. He was murdered. Jason. Yeah. And he yeah. either plucked a bit of his hair and left it on the body, or <laughs> spit on a dead man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Oh, it's so tempting. It's like well, you ever go to a funeral of somebody you don't like, and like, nope, nobody would even fucking tell right now if I fucking spit on you, you piece of shit. <laughs> the rest of the viewing line just follows. Like, is that? Spit on his eye. <laughs> yes. Why it, are his eyes taped open? Yes, it's a uh, Maori tradition. It's it's like uh, the haka. It's the hakalugi where everybody has to do it, and we all make a big procession about it. Yeah, like Ace Ventura. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> It's real come quiet hours right now. It really um, is, man. The end of our podcast when um, Mike won't let us leave, but he still makes us do podcasts after we've been doing it for an hour. It's called the come quiet hour. Okay. I'm very excited because uh, <laughs> you're in the middle of it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I hope you like citrus. <laughs> <laughs> so John and Jake designed a very nice t-shirt. Uh, they're, be they're behind me and uh, we're going to put them up for sale for the general public soon, but we brought them. Pre-sale coming up soon. Yeah. We brought them probably up now if you're watching this episode. Honestly, oh cool, yeah. Uh, watching it on public, but Patreon's going to get it tomorrow. Yeah, we'll yeah. tell you. Yeah, maybe we'll keep it a secret. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> be real fun to sell no t-shirts, right? Yeah, but yeah, we brought them to our first show last night, and it was cool seeing people buy them. Man, we sold them to half of our audience, uh, and I won't tell you how much is how many we sold. <laughs> <laughs> But if, it, if that happens again the night, whew, baby, yeah, it's going to be good. Yeah. Our, our suitcase is going to be a lot later on the way home. <laughs> We're going to buy another bag. <laughs> How'd you get them down here? You carried them? Uh, we yeah. each wore 16. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we all checked a bag. And I gave. We all took 15 of the shirts. Uh, it's not that much. Okay. Yeah, I just, I mailed a bunch. I went to Boston oh. for my dad's funeral. I actually mailed my dad back to myself. Oh. Yeah. Wait, what, really? Yeah. <laughs> I mailed his ashes, which Do you, I don't think is legal. Wait. Really? Yeah. No, I feel like you have to be able, that has to be, a, there's a class to it where that's legal. I'm sure it's legal if you declare, which you, I did oh, not. Okay, you just no. like, you had them and you're like, I'm not going to check this bag. I'm going to just mail it. Yeah, and I said it was media mail, which is like way cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that is so, <laughs> you, you are a writer, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, sorry to bring that up. I don't know. That's no, that's <laughs> fucking, it's very interesting. That's crazy. The thing. So you just mailed them yourself. Like it wasn't the crematorium or something like that. No, I mailed them myself. Yeah, and yeah. he didn't just pass. This was like a while. We've been these have been held by a friend. So it's not. I'm not in mourning at the moment. Okay. Yeah. So. I mean, would they? You say held by like a friend was holding your. Yeah, like a family friend was holding on to the remains. Okay. And then I'm now mailing them home to myself. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Because I didn't want to check a bag. So I was going to say, what is your friend doing? <laughs> yeah, people, yeah, yeah. Yeah. people hate the airport yeah. so much, they'll mail their parents around. Yeah. Well, to be fair, my, you know, he was Jewish. If it fits, it ships, yeah. He was Jewish, and, and to honor him, I didn't pay for a checked bag. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Have you Sorry, guys man. ever mailed something fucked up? <laughs> I've told people I was going to mail them drugs and just didn't after they sent me money. 
Damn. Yeah, well, that's that's the opposite. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've ever mailed anything funny. I think I've always been afraid of sending like drugs and that, and that kind of shit. But I did bring a coconut back from Costa Rica, and I think that's a big no-no. What? Yeah, yeah, no, that's illegal. What are we gonna do with it? It's just uh, gonna be a paperweight on my desk. A big hairy paperweight. But I ain't got a desk, so it's just been in my mom's basement for 15 years. Were you gonna practice getting hit from a big head bitch? <laughs> 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 now that's a little Beetlejuice motherfucker right there. Oh man. <laughs> It's a tiny coconut. You got a little peanut head. I I mailed uh, death threats to Bill Cl- President Bill Clinton. What? <laughs> <laughs> Is this exclusive? Is this breaking news? Is this for real? Uh, it might, yeah, I, when I was probably in third grade, I, I wrote a letter, ter- like a terrorist letter to Bill Clinton, signed as my friend Richie Boccaccio, because he's... <laughs> <laughs> Because he stole my, because he stole my Game Boy Color. Oh my god, <laughs> dude! That's the best revenge plot I've ever heard of. Yeah. You were in the third grade. Oh. And I, yeah, I like threatened death and threatened ter- you know, terrorism acts against the White House, and was like, and if you want to catch me, like, I live at XXX, you know, and my name I'll is be Richie Boccaccio. <laughs> God, dude, that's yeah. insane, man. They must have, uh, and then you uh, you put his mailing address as the return address, yeah, obviously. Yeah, and nothing happened, you know. But did you use gloves when you sealed no, it up? I was in third grade. I uh-huh. mean, I didn't, you know. He used you knew Picacios enough. But you were <laughs> tips. <laughs> hey, yeah. Richie, come here, hold this paper for me. <laughs> yeah. Also, Mr. President, I've enclosed a hand turkey for you. <laughs> oh, so no man. one ever, uh, no, no, no phone calls were made, no doors were knocked on after that. No, no, nothing happened. And then, and then when I got sober, I actually called Richie and made made amends, and and we had a long conversation. You made amends for something you did when you were in third grade and sober already? Yeah, because I wanted to reconnect with Richie. You know, Richie was like went to Iraq. He's like a good man. You yeah, know, he became a cop and all that. And and um, dude, what if that's prevented yeah. him from becoming a cop? <laughs> 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 No, because I think it just, if you mail something to 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, they just throw it away. I mean, yeah. there can't, can't send, be somebody that reads every letter. Yeah, right? you can't send yeah. fan mail but to the president. I don't know, man. I got to imagine, like, especially now, they have to at least open them because if somebody's mailing something to the White House, it's got to be insane. Yeah. And most of those people probably are harmless, but there's a certain percentage of people where you got to think, all right, if they're going, if this is a boundary they're crossing now, what's going to be next? That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. Man, what are, I how, wonder. How That's, great would it have been to see the president do like a state of the union and be like, Richie, <laughs> I know you're out there, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was pre 9-11, so it was just a more chill time. Yeah. 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 All the third graders were sending death threats. To the <laughs> yeah. That's got to be like a, a Secret Service guy is like lying to his parents about how insane his job is. They're like, oh, my God, you're guarding the president. He's like, yeah, it's like I'm totally not reading child terrorist letters. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it was clearly it, like I probably wrote it with like a crayon. I mean, it was clearly yeah. not yeah. serious. Everywhere you, know? you look, yeah. everywhere you turn, <laughs> I'll be watching you. Like a retarded, you know, child wrote a letter to the president. You know, oh my god. Be honest, yeah. did you draw a picture in the letter? I don't remember. I could imagine I maybe did draw like stick figures shooting the president or something. <laughs> <laughs> But I think they probably looked at it and they said, oh, this is cute. Like a kid wrote a letter to the president. It's, yeah, it's on the refrigerator of the Secret <laughs> Service. Yeah. yeah. But that just shows you the mind state of like someone that became a drug addict. Yeah. yeah. Just like that. We'll go that far. Holds on to a resentment that hard. <laughs> Early on, too. Yeah. Third grade, you said? Yeah. Over a guy that borrowed a Game Boy Color for too long. <laughs> oh, so you got it back. Uh, I forget. I think he... You know what? I kind of have a... He did, he did something to me and I think... You know what? Actually, I think he ditched me. I think he ditched me, and then actually he left his Game Boy Color at my house. And I remember running his Game Boy Color underwater to like break it. And then yeah. I'm, and then I was like, "Oh, Richie, like you left your Game Boy Color here." Oh my gosh! It was a real bastard. Yeah, just in a million pieces Whoa. with the hammer right next to it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just found it like this. I forget yeah. what he did to me. He, uh, yeah, I think I don't think he took. I think I took his Game Boy Color. Actually, yeah, I'm a real piece of shit. Yeah, I was, <laughs> yeah. Oh, the kid with a wet Game Boy is mailing yeah. threatening letters to the president. You don't say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he's a good man, Richie Boccaccio. Yeah, and so are you, man. I mean, yeah. you've, you've really come a long way since wedding Game Boys and threatening to kill the president. Yeah. Well, I'm trying to make up for how much of a piece of shit I was, but yeah. Yeah, but Richie's a good man. He was actually a security guard in Philly at a bar at one point. Richie, I mean, 
How's it going? <laughs> no, he's a good he's a good man, dude. I Jared, I am also a man who likes to give people's full names on podcasts, so it yeah. really means a lot. To oh me yeah, too. sorry, Richie Bacacci. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, he just got married. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations, uh, Richie. <laughs> to his beautiful wife. <laughs> I, don't, no, 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 no. I don't know her your name, but you know. Yeah. No, he, he's, a, he's a good man. Uh, he almost went to the went pro MLB. He was a, a pitcher. Whoa. Oh, shit. Yeah, Whoa. Or, or I think he triple A or something. I don't, yeah, he's, yeah. You went to. Good guy. My mom used to, my parents used to do heroin with his mom. Oh, wow. Damn. Yeah. Yeah, we were like the two fucked up kids from my neighborhood. Oh, man. Yeah. That's crazy. Made my, it out. Dude, my parents used to just go to people's house and play Uno. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe a little Pinochle or something. Yeah. Pinochle's great. You play Pinochle? Nah, I think just the old people in my neighborhood did when yeah. I was a kid. It's Italian. Old Italians play yeah. it, right? Yeah. 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 I got to learn. Yeah. Great Is that game. a solo game or is that when you play people? Oh, people. that's bringing yeah. everybody out yeah. to the front yard. <laughs> yeah. Smoking their camel. No filters. I don't oh. like the way that it's spelled, though. I hate the way it's spelled. Yeah, yeah. It's, I was like, a how's bunch it spelled? Of nonsense letters in there. It ends in O C H L E, kind of like in Yoki. Oh god. Yeah, Jared, how do you pronounce <clears throat> this word that's spelled G N O C C H I? I pronounce it Noki, but I don't think that's correct. It's way more correct than what Mike just said. What did he say? In Yoki. Yoki. In Yoki. In Yoki. Yoki. He adds another syllable to He's, the beginning. His phonetic spelling of that would be I N Y U L K E. Is that how you? Uh, yeah. In Yolki. Yeah, that's. Yeah, and how do you say it? It's Yonki. Yeah, that's that's weird too. But how that is correct. I, I need to hear that. I say Yonki. Is it? Well, I know I'm asking. Yeah. I think so. Because you're Italian, right? Uh, I'm as Irish as I am, as my last name is Italian, and, okay. twice, and twice as Polish. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little riddle. Uh, I think you said the other acceptable correct pronunciation. Noki. Noki. Yeah. 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 My aunt's a very cultured woman, and she introduced Noki to me and told me how to told me to call it that. Yeah, I think. I think it. I think it's correct. I don't know. When the you say she's thing, cultured, do you mean like she pronounces everything correctly? Yeah, like she's a Bay Area kind of like, like uh, Barcelona, upper, like you that. know, highfalutin lady. Yeah. 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 Barcelona. <laughs> yeah. No, she doesn't do that. Okay. No, she has like a Boston accent, so there's only so much class. Barcelona. She can <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, the one thing we can all agree on is that Mike is not saying it correctly. Uh, <laughs> and I that's am. what we'll agree on. Yeah, and the... Uh, G in the word Inyoki is silent, much like I wish you would be. <laughs> Permanently. I'll stop talking right now, Mike. Go get head from your big head, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> leave, his, the, leave the big head bitch out alone. <laughs> <laughs> it would be great if uh, to see like a woman with a Dora the Explorer costume size head knock on the door. <laughs> is John home? <laughs> wow, he wasn't kidding. Yeah. We have to study anatomy together. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, big head bitches make the world go around. Wow, we really did it, didn't we? Yeah, man. Yeah, that was the five seconds of silence that we needed to officially be able to call it. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Jared, tell people where they can get your book. Yeah, if you just go to Amazon.com, you search Jared Clickstein, Crooked Smile. You can find it on there. You can follow me on Twitter, at Jared Clickstein. You can pronounce it Jared Clickstein if you'd like to. People in my family pronounce it differently, uh, but it's spelled K-L-I-C-K-S-T-E-I-N. Uh, Instagram, Jared Clickstein. Uh, just if you can't afford it, hit me up. I'll send you. I'll send you a PDF or I'll mail you a book. And uh, yeah, and check out Mike's books too. I I, I checked out Delco Dirtball. It was amazing. Uh, on Perks, of course, a classic. Um, thank you, brother. Yeah, and thank you guys. Thank you guys so much. Dude, thank you for coming yeah, on. Thanks for doing it. Yeah, yeah really. Yeah, fun. you're so fun, funny, and interesting, man. Thank I, you. I, I thank can talk you so to you much. forever, dude. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I greatly appreciative. Yeah, man. This. Yeah. Yeah. Likewise, man. Yeah. Yeah. JD, what do you want to promote, brother? Uh, follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Johnny Delco and come see us in the Bay Area. We're going to be in San Francisco and Sacramento in October, uh, Tuesday, October 20 something. 22nd and, and third. Second and yes. then the next night in Sacramento, 23rd. 23rd. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Come out and see us. Yeah, yeah you thought you knew what the Bay of Pigs was. <laughs> Speaking of pigs, follow me at Jake Matera on Twitter, Instagram, all that stuff. And if you want to watch some of my stand up film during a special, which was a mistake, uh, it's uh, just go into YouTube, write a soft one, and write my name, and you'll see some funny stuff.
Thank you, Jake. Yeah, thank you, Mike. What about you? Uh, thank you to everybody who came out to see us last night in Dallas. Uh, looking forward to tonight in Austin. This show will be over by the time you watch it, but if you're coming to the show in Austin tonight, we appreciate you. And check out our live shows in San Francisco and Sacramento in October. I can't wait for that shit. Links for ticket links for that will be in the show description, so check that out. And then also uh, grab a copy of my new book, Doko Dirtball. It is a wigger crime novel. I promise you, it will be the funniest book that you read all year. There's print versions available, ebook versions, audiobook versions, whatever suits your fancy. And uh, I'll tell you what, man. Um, anyone who buys a copy of this book, I'm going to give you the number of uh, the big head bitch who sucks John off. <laughs> that is a guarantee. But uh, check out Doko Dirtball. My goal is to sell 5,000 copies. I recently surpassed 2,600. So thank you to those of you that have made that happen. And, uh, yeah, I look forward to hitting my goal of 5,000. And uh, I think you're really going to enjoy this. Onperks.com is where you can get this and all my other shit. Oh, and that's where we're, we'll have the uh, shirts up for pre-sale. By the time you're watching this on YouTube public or listening uh, to the public version of this, they'll probably be available. We're going to do a 10-day pre-sale. Can't do it forever. We're going to order one more batch of these shirts, and then it's going back in the vault, baby. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The same Disney vault. So it's, it's going to be a bunch of Disney characters wearing little stinker shirts. It's going to be a <laughs> fucked up vault, man. Look at this shirt. Isn't it neat? <laughs> Let's go find a big head bitch to... Never mind. Right. <laughs> to skeet, skeet, skeet. Mm, yes. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> all right. Love all you big head bitches out there. We'll see you next time. Oh, also, we're not going yet. We got to oh. mention Patreon. Yo, uh, thank oh, you yeah. to everybody who supports oh, yeah. us on Patreon. If you go to patreon.com slash stinkers, that's the easiest, most direct way to support us. On top of that, too, there are plenty of benefits. You get every episode a week early. You get live streams almost every week. Uh, you're going to get stinker news episodes. You're going to get movie watch-alongs, book club meetings, live AMAs. All, dude, heaven AMAs. Oh, my God. I, I, I cannot wait to tell you guys more about heaven. I know any oh. anything and everything there is to know about where you ascend to after you pass away. Uh, please become a patron. <laughs> Patreon.com slash Little Stinkers. It's either 4 bucks a month or $40 for the year, whatever you want to pay. Um, you get access to all that shit, and then it allows us to keep doing fun stuff and to me, me keeping these guys here on the couch much longer than they, than they probably want to be. It's week after week we're doing this shit at Patreon.com slash Little Stinkers. Thanks, goodbye. All right, see you big hit of bitches later. <laughs> There's so much fucked up shit to get into. Mail stickers.